Welcome to Electra Online. Here we're going to take a look at a whole bunch of compounds and see if we can identify the names along with it. At least, do they look familiar and are we beginning to recognize them? Some of them will be easy and others will be a little bit more complicated. So starting with alkane, alkene, and alkyne, well by now we should realize that when we have ane we have a single bond, ene we have a double bond, ine we have a triple bond. Then we should recognize the aromatic hydrocarbons, the ones that look that have the six carbons in a circle and the alternating single and double bonds. Then we have what we call the alkyl halide. Now halide means that we're using one of the uh, atoms in the second to last column of the periodic tables. We have the fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So here we have the chlorine that gives it an halide, and alkyl meaning that there is a single carbon with the chlorine. Alcohol, well we have an OH attached, a hydroxyl group attached to a carbon chain and so this forms an alcohol since there's two of them that would be methyl alcohol. Here we have thiol and we recognize that because we have a sulfur and a hydrogen attached to the carbon group. Here we have an amine because we have an NH2, nitrogen H2 uh, attached to the carbon chain. Here we have an ether, which means we have an oxygen embedded in the carbon chain. Here we have a sulfide, where we have a sulfur embedded in the, in the carbon chain. And here we have a phenol, we have the hydroxyl group, just like we have for the alcohol, the hydroxyl group, but in this case it's added to an aromatic hydrocarbon, so a circular or a benzene ring, and therefore we call that a phenol. A ketone is where we have an oxygen double bonded to one of the carbons in the carbon chain. Here we have an aldehyde. Now aldehyde is recognized by having the oxygen double bonded to the last carbon in the chain, which is also uh, connected to a hydrogen. Here we have a carboxylic acid, which means we have an oxygen double bond to the last carbon, but instead of hydrogen, we have the hydroxyl group OH attached to the same carbon at the end of the chain, which makes it an acid. Here we have an ester, which looks very much like the acid. Notice we have the oxygen double bond, but instead of having the OH, the hydroxyl group, we have an oxygen, and then we have another carbon there, or it could be a carbon chain, so that makes it an ester. Here we have a thioester. Thio is always associated with sulfur, so here we have the same grouping. We have the double bonded oxygen, but instead of having an oxygen, we have a sulfur and then the carbon chain. So that means that this is what we call a thioester. It looks the same as an ester, but with a sulfur instead of an oxygen. Whenever we see amide, we know there's going to be a nitrogen somewhere. So in this case, we do have a nitrogen attached to a carbon chain, and we have that also with a double bonded oxygen to the last carbon. And then notice it looks very much like an ester, but instead of having an oxygen there or a sulfur for a thioester, we have a nitrogen there for an amide, but we still need an extra hydrogen there for the extra bond that the nitrogen needs. Here we have an acyl phosphate. Now notice that this is the phosphate group, that's where the phosphate comes from, and acyl that is the oxygen double bond on the carbon gives that the acyl uh, functional group OC and then we have the phosphate attached to it. Here we have the acid, acid chloride. Notice that this, let's go back to the acid chain right here, so notice that this looks exactly like this, but instead of having an OH at the end, we have a chlorine. So this becomes acid chloride to give the name for that molecule that looks just like that one. Here we have a phosphate ester. So first of all, we have to have a phosphate group, but then we also have an ester indication. So let's go over here and notice that to have an ester, we have to have an oxygen double bond and another oxygen embedded within the CH chain right there. So that's exactly what we have. We have an oxygen double bond and we have the oxygen over here attached to a CH3. However, instead of having a carbon there, we have a phosphorus atom there. But again, they call that an ester because it looks exactly the same, but we call that a phosphate ester because it comes off a phosphate group instead of having a carbon chain there. Here we have a phosphate diester. 
Well, the difference between this one and this one is that we have a second oxygen with a CH3 attached to it. So notice that instead of having one, we have two, so therefore they call that the phosphate diester. Again, ester because we have an oxygen double bonded to what otherwise would have been a carbon with an oxygen and a CH group, the CH3 group there, just like we have for the ester right here. But now we have two of them and phosphate instead of carbon, so we call that phosphate diester. Again, there's so many different combinations, but at least you begin to see how we use those functional subgroups to build up the names that we use for the various compounds that we have in this kind of chemistry. So hopefully that gives you some insight and some ideas of how to name things. Obviously you need to go through this a lot and add on to all the various molecules that we will encounter in order to come up with the naming convention. But we'll see some more of those in the videos to come.